Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Tech Shake, where we continue to unpack, explore, and understand better what's going on in the Pakistan tech startup ecosystem. Today, very fortunate to have Salal Hassan, the executive director of the VC and the equity funding space for JS Group. Salal, thank you very much for being on the show. Pleased to be here, Farouk. Thank you so much. Well, you and I discussed it already, have an interesting history with the founders and the current leadership of the bank. Uh, you guys were actually an early sponsor of TechCheck, so we really appreciate that. And we look forward to learning more about what's going on with JS Bank, JS Group, and what you're doing to develop that ecosystem. Please tell us a little bit about you and what we just asked you about. So, um, Farouk, thank you so much. So, um, JS Group, um, known to most, is is a is a started off as a brokerage business. Um, we're really keen on on investing and helping entrepreneurs um, from from Pakistan um, succeed. Um, so, if you look at it, perhaps prior to 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 the venture uh, ecosystem that we're currently in, which is you know over the past five six years, JS historically has always been helping entrepreneurs. So whether that be through partnerships with Acumen, through TechCheck, um, and different other entities as well. Um, we had two private equity funds as well that used to actively invest in the past. Um, I think um, for us over the past two years, it's been a, um, a, a phase whereby we put together our learnings um, to try and bring together um, the right, uh, the right uh, vehicles, the right investment uh, methodologies um, and 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 there, you know, we've been the first um, commercial bank to invest actively in startups with JS Bank. Um, we've done about seven transactions um, at, at that stage. Um, Excellent. We're the first first commercial bank in the region, and and we have a few other exciting uh, exciting projects to follow. No, that's fantastic, and it's good. And I I do have the like I said the first hand experience of knowing how forward thinking the group is and the bank is particularly with these types of projects. So that, that leads me on to, so Salal, um, there's a lot of, you know, help me understand a little more about JS's legacy in, you know, supporting entrepreneurs and working within the tech infrastructure in Pakistan. Um, so JS's legacy in terms of technology started off with the first business, which was in the brokerage space. We were partnered with Bear Stearns. Um, so Mr. Jangir Siddiqui, the founder of the group, um, used to have uh, the proprietary trading platforms from Bear Stearns and Wall Street. Um, and, and if you speak to, to, to JS himself, he will tell you that that gave us a competitive advantage in Pakistan to settle U.S. trades and allowed us to be the executing broker for all the eight main um, or seven main U.S. Um, you know brokerage houses. So you're talking about uh, Goldman Sachs. You're talking about J.P. Morgan. When our markets were doing good, um, right. you know, the, the public markets were doing good. And um, then it comes to uh, the two principals in, in Ali Jang, Ambassador Ali Jangir Siddiqui, um, who who acquired American Express to found J.S. Bank. Um, and and um, and then set up the two first private equity funds. Um, a lot of um, you know, like I say, this is perhaps the second tech bubble in Pakistan. Um, three companies came out of the, the the previous one, which which of course you had the Netsol Systems um, and a BPO play called TRG, um, mm -hmm. which then gave a, gave a, um, a spinoff in the form of Affinity, the the AI company. Um, so so we were big believers in that. And um, then there's a lot of, um, you know, we have two fully functioning um, um, nonprofit entities, uh, MJSF and, and Future Foundation, um, mm -hmm. which, which invest a lot in, for example, the Acumen Fund. Um, right. Acumen was in 2013, 14 and 15, I believe, also uh, partnered with us um, from a grant initiative. So the thesis was that we help entrepreneurs. Um, I just joined to come in and institutionalize or initially just to structure it and get the get the permissions and get the approvals. 
Very cool. Very cool. No, that's that's great. And that legacy obviously leads us to my next question, which is of greater interest because that's really what TechCheck is focused on is direct impact on the startup ecosystem. So tell us a little more about your new venture with 500 startups. That's very, very intriguing. So um, with 500 startups, not 500 global, um, what we realized was uh, 63% of the transactions um, in this current uh, in this current cycle were mainly at the seed stage. Um, that's where founders have um, the most requirement, um, whether it comes to in terms of company formation, holding company formation, product market fit. Uh, more importantly, the things that matter in the current macro, which is how you de-risk your investment, how you build with capital efficiency, um, all those things, um, we saw that 500 does and does fast and much faster than any um, any of us, any of the local business groups. Um, and obviously, they had a, a, an investment appetite for Pakistan. So they've been investing since 2015. They were the first US VC to invest in, in, in Pakistan. Right. Um, for us, there was an alignment of of thought and mind um, in terms of the approach to investing, um, and 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 they felt like um, you know with with JS, um, I hope that um, our structure together would give more flexibility to the entrepreneurs. So we didn't want something that is just either outside Pakistan or inside. Uh, we're working on something that gives the added flexibility, then a platform. Um, locally, and then allows our entrepreneurs and, and 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 companies that come out of it to do what perhaps you know we we know how to build those companies and how to invest, but to give it that global platform at speed. So perhaps we could do it in our private equity days for maybe the top three portfolio companies. Right. With five hundred, um, we can do it for um, a, a, a entire batch, as they call it, right? So the twenty thirty companies, and they're extremely um, you know structured with this and the way they do it is it, it, the results speak for itself uh, so you have 43 unicorns like 70 percent are emerging markets you know grab sure. you would know uh, canva uh, you would know bulak park in malaysia so one just needs to travel to southeast asia and, and you can feel the impact that 500 has had no doubt no doubt so interestingly now now that you've got this you know, you guys have the legacy and understand the ecosystem. You've got the partnerships cemented. What are some midterm goals? Right? What do you What do you see as success for you in the next, let's say, twenty four months? The next twenty four months, um, it's 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 a difficult time um, to be very candid, as as you're aware with the with. With venture capital uh, into emerging markets has been a factor of um, the U.S. economy having very low interest rates um, and the Chinese also wanting to softly participate um, and, and, and then have some technology transfer. Um, as soon as one starts to see the Federal Reserve, as they did in November, hike their rates, rates up another you know, 50 basis points or 75, and you're talking about real interest next year in the U.S. being 5%. Um, you know that um, you know uh, people who are investing with other people's money are in trouble. Um, sure. So, so uh, the same in China. Um, you know, Pakistan was a big, um, a big, uh, and from the infrastructure side, uh, benefited a lot from the CPEC investment, um, and and that was a big, big value add. But um, you know, that's also detract a lot, um, and and China is not taking a. So these are things that we need to solve for. And I think the way to solve for, for this current macro is, is I was writing a memo to our portfolio companies called Wartime CEO. So you need to have founders that have uh, resilience, um, that understand fiduciary duty, um, you know, understand that it's other people's mon money and, and that solve for, for real problems. Um, so I think that's in 24 months uh, for us, it's about making sure that we give our entrepreneurs the right um, uh, tools, enablement. Um, that's what we do with ecosystem development at JS Bank, providing the licenses, the rails, um, the open banking, 
um, so that not just our portfolio companies, but any tech company in Pakistan can easily uh, integrate with JS Bank. We have the Apigee suite, uh, Google APIs, which give an open um, environment for any you know fintech e-commerce. A lot of them, Kareem, for example, is by Kia, even though it's our but Kareem competitive company. Um, all the bill presentment is pretty much using our open banking um, in the country. So we great. try and keep it open, please. Oh, that's great. That's great. No, and I see. So you're <clears throat> the basic premise is proceed with caution. You know, um, evaluate your bets a lot more carefully and make sure the people that you're betting on have the mindset, <clears throat> excuse me, and the ability to to kind of see through this difficult time yeah okay no that's good no that's good to know and 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 as you know uh salal you know we we tend not to to take tech check we don't turn them into three hour episodes so i'm going to ask you my last question and i think this is super pertinent because you know you guys are pioneers in the space and are continuing to grow you know we need to get diaspora more engaged right and we we're constantly trying to do that so what are your what are some words of wisdom that you can share and make people on the other side here more comfortable with looking at Pakistan and investing in Pakistan? For the American diaspora, um, I think it's just the opportunity that's that's uh, essentially at a tipping point um, for us. Um, if you look at any emerging market, every ten percent increase in digital penetration leads to one percent growth in GDP purely through documentation. So when you're looking at a country like Pakistan, which is sitting at 54% um, and with $3 billion in, in exports uh, through technology, you know that the opportunity is, is incomparable right now. Sure. Um, it's, it's essentially our generation's opportunity now to capture um, with the current age that we have. And I think the second most important thing is um, in terms of IT, uh, technology, and startups, um, that whether it's any political party um, or any government or any government functionary, they understand it's the only industry that generates exports, the only one that contributes to FDI with 960 or $970 million having come in just in startups. Um, the regulators are now um, keen, and, and I think everything else, like textiles, uh, agri, they've already tried and tested those industries and they see a lot of problems with giving more subsidies and more um, benefits to them. Um, so it's our opportunity. And I think the, the best part of, of VC and why I wanted to do, you know, why I was passionate to become a venture capitalist in Pakistan uh, with JS is it's, it's the only industry that's not a zero sum game. Mm -hmm. um, so I keep um, telling our portfolio partners or the founders that it's the only opportunity where there is enough of a of an independent captive market for um, by Kia, Airlift, um, you know, whoever it may be to to coexist um, and compete purely on on KPIs and metrics. Um, you know, God forbid we don't want any of these things going into into our courts because then. Uh, yeah, I see the smile on folks. This, this yeah. is what we want to. Yeah, what you want to avoid. I get it. No, that's that's excellent. Look, uh, really uh, a pleasure to have you on and get your insights. You know, I know, I know the the group and the bank well enough to know you guys are really uh, Pakistan first and very entrenched in that ecosystem. So great to get your insights and thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you, Farooq. Um, I, before I go, if if, uh, if I don't mention our, our our only initiative that's geared towards millennials and, and the young entrepreneurs, Zindiji, um, the digital bank, um, digital banking initiative um, is, is something that I would highly um, invoke, highly motivate um, other technology businesses, we're welcome. Uh, we welcome you to come and partner with us, to come and build with us, um, and, and and we hope and, and give us your feedback as well. You know, if it's uh, there's a lot of uh, critical feedback, so we're great to take it on the chin, um, and 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 we're all here. Uh, well, so thank good. you so much, Farouk. <clears throat> thank you, and it's 
it's good to see and hear that you guys are looking at these things and we'll and I'm going to share this with my audience now and say look here's an open call folks to feed into what's going on and if you do have interesting thought process or capabilities share it with us we want to make sure that we can propagate this and get it to the right people at the right time so with that i bid you all allah hafiz please like share and subscribe on our channel and keep referring people into us thank you very much Thank you.